My friends, there's been a rash of YouTube videos making the rounds lately promoting you being able to get Windows 10 for ridiculously low prices. Nearly all of them are sponsored by SCD Key, who even approached us as well about doing a paid video on how cheap you could get Windows 10, just like all of the rest of the videos that you've already seen from plenty of bigger and smaller YouTubers. In fact, this isn't even the first time that SCD Key has approached me about a potential sponsorship deal with them. Over a year back, they asked to do a recurring weekly sponsorship, and if you haven't already guessed it, I declined. I declined them back then, just like I've declined them now. Why are you bringing this up, Brett? I mean, it's not like every single time I decline someone for paying me for one of our videos to do a sponsorship that I make a video about it, so why now? Well, given the sheer amount of YouTubers that have clearly accepted money for this deal from SCD Key, I feel like the conversation needs to be had surrounding the topic of these third-party key resellers. There's a lot that has happened behind the scenes with many of these sites that I want to chat about, and to give a firm stance as to why I have decided not to take any sort of partnership with them. And before this becomes, you know, like a holier than thou video where I come across as uppity for espousing my views while simultaneously condemning others, I want it to be clear, as clear as I can possibly make it at least, that I simply want to open the conversation and present my side. I can guarantee that there's a thousand and one things that I do on this channel that anyone can likewise make a retort video and shove them in my face and expose my hypocritical and double-minded approach to various topics. To be flawed is to be human, and I'm not trying to claim that I'm above anyone or say that they shouldn't have taken these deals. This is merely my attempt at a conversation with you all as to why I didn't take this particular deal that's sweeping the interwebs, even though the money is clearly there. But even though the title says that this video will never be sponsored, my friends, it's actually sponsored by UFD.Deals. Yes, my friends, we have a deals website that we bring all of the latest and greatest deals that we can find roaming the internets on Amazon, Newegs, the likes of those. These are legitimate deals, not something that we made up or it's just like, it's just affiliate links. We get paid if you guys buy from it using the links that are there. UFD.deals, links in the description. I'm promoting my own service. Thank you guys so much for watching, but let's get back into the meat of the topic, or the meat topic of the video so that we can actually get to the whole point. But yes, today's video is sponsored. It's sponsored by me. Thank you so much. And you, because if you guys buy, then it actually makes the sponsorship worth it. Anyways, G2A, Kingwin, SCD Key, the list goes on. What are they? They're all third-party websites that make a business selling game keys, and in this case, Windows keys. A quick look at these sites, and you will see that the games being sold are normally heavily discounted, like Windows 10 for 10 bucks, 14 bucks when it normally sells for $200. Yeah, that's a that's good discount. So which, as a gamer or a system builder on a budget, you're probably thinking, Ka -ching! but then we should kind of be wondering amongst ourselves, why are these games so cheap if you compare them to other platforms? Let's say, for example, Steam. So let me give you the quick rundown. And everything I'm gonna mention here is not me saying that any of these current companies Companies are actually participating in these activities, just I'm quoting other sources and potentially no lawsuits, please. Simply put, what these types of sites do is they create a marketplace where it's possible to resell game keys. They allow users like you and I who have a game key for a game and want to create a listing so that other users who actually want that game can purchase that key from you. Sounds pretty nice, right? I mean, I have a few Humble Bundle game keys I would like to get rid of. However, the problem doesn't come in with that kind of thing. The problem comes in with something called money laundering. So I'm going to use an example that actually happened around about 2015 to explain this. So back in 2015, Ubisoft had a pretty big deal game called Far Cry 4. I hate it so much that I can't even pronounce its name properly. You may have heard of it. Anyway, a whole bunch of credit card information was stolen and ended up in the hands of some nefarious character. That information was then used by the thief to buy a whole stack of game keys for Far Cry 4 from the Origin store. They then took those game keys and listed them for sale on G2A at a lower cost. Naturally, a whole bunch of users were super excited to get it for dirt cheap and it sold really well. Obviously, the thief made lots of money from the pur purchases, but now that money he has is technically clean since he got it from another business. That's pretty much how money laundering works. Thief steal money, gives money to someone else who then gives the money back in an indirect way, which means it can't be traced, or if it can be traced, it's from like a clean source, in this case, key resellers. But 
it doesn't stop there. The credit card companies then eventually find out about the fraud once the legitimate owners report strange transactions, and then they trace the purchase and issue out a chargeback for the original purchase. In our example, this is what happened to Origin. A chargeback means that the credit card company is just like, yo, those are fraudulent, give us the money back. And since they hold a lot of buying power because they're major companies, Origin kowtows and just gives them the money back. So Origin loses money because they already issued the keys, but now the money that they would have gotten for those keys has been taken back by the credit card company so they lost product and profit so the story continues and even if you want to argue that they didn't lose any product because it's just a digital copy of something sure but they lost potential sales then we have the publisher who then reacted by going through the process of revoking all of the keys that were purchased. So what does that mean? So you know how you activate a game on Steam or Ubisoft and you've been enjoying the game for a while, but let's say the publisher finds out that one of those keys that were activated was part of this fraud, then they decide to revoke it. So now you're just sitting there very confused, no game to play because you were able to play the game just the day before. Now you get a notification saying the key is an invalid and now you can't play it anymore. So poof, game gone, and they are justified because technically it was never paid for. You paid the third party, you didn't pay them. So in the case of the Far Cry 4 incident, that was a massive issue. They had a whole bunch of keys that they revoked and then the internet exploded. There were complaints everywhere from gamers who felt cheated and it got to the point where Ubisoft said that they will reinstate the keys for those accounts that were impacted. Keep in mind that this was them trying to save face with the consumer even though they lost income by doing so about 148,377 euros actually so this type of loss is happening regularly because a good few companies fear the public backlash that came about from revoking keys in the far cry incident however consider indie game developers so in order to even track keys to prevent this happening to them a system would need to be created and resources allocated to manage this which i mean let's be honest in smaller indie companies they will not be able to do so with their limited resources when something like this happens to them so they're just losing money so compounding the problem is that this is sometimes not even just a straight chargeback sometimes the credit card companies actually force reversal charges on them when that many keys are claimed back so mike Ganade. Nade, G Nade, the founder lead developer of the previous indie game stand, has reported, quote, in the case of indie game stand, I estimate it's directly cost us well over $12,000, and that's just in raw chargeback fees, end quote. So this is causing such frustration and has such a significant impact on the developer companies, the smaller ones. It has literally led to some indie devs like Dan Teasdale, that's a hard word for me to say, saying, and I quote, so yeah, if you're going to buy our games on G2A for peanuts, please just pirate it instead and use that money to donate to a good cause. So notice how I haven't really mentioned how this has impacted the third party websites that are involved. Here's the kicker. These websites are making profit in this entire situation since they get a cut of the sale, but there's no co real consequence when things like this go wrong. One of them offers to ensure a speedy refund if you're sold a bad key, but only if you pay extra for such a service. These large unregulated websites are making money while developers are hurting and some gamers are being fooled into buying dodgy keys. In recent months, some sites have tried to create a kickback system so that developers can get 10% of the sale, but that's an insult when you still have to deal with chargebacks if the game key was not purchased legitimately. Now, we're not saying that you should only ever buy direct from Steam. There are legitimate sites like GOG.com where you can get, or Humble Bundle, where you can get games cheaper, but games sold there are done so legitimately even if they are purchased in bulk. There's no third parties distributing keys through the marketplace as they're partnered with the publishers to issue the keys, which means that the people who make the game get to keep their money. Woo! Remember, friends, what it comes down to is that the money needs to get to the developer for making the game, not the people who are actually selling the game, because if you want to keep enjoying games like Far Cry or God of War or even smaller titles like Stories, Path of Destinies or Faster Than Light. So to summarize, these websites can be used by criminals to launder their money and it impacts the gaming industry as the developers are out of pocket for game keys that weren't legitimately bought. And in some cases, they're footing the bill of the transaction fee for the chargebacks imposed on them by the credit card companies. Like, I want the question to be out there. Is that extra couple of bucks that you're saving worth the risk of supporting a shady industry like this?
You know how it goes. If the deal is too good to be true, it probably is. Be careful where you spend your money and buy your games responsibly. That's my my little tidbit there. But then also, like I, I noticed in a lot of the videos about the Windows key, plenty of people were saying I had to check this out for myself. I needed to make sure that they're legitimate. Just because the key actually activates and you get to keep the product that you purchased doesn't mean that it was acquired through legal means. It doesn't mean that it is an actual key that Microsoft actually got paid for. And I'm sure that we have plenty of people in these comments who are gonna rage on about, well, these are big corporations. They don't need that much money, Brett. Or Windows 10 sucks anyways. I shouldn't have to pay for it. Which is fair. If you wanna take that stance, there's probably not much I can do to convince you of anything at this point as related to this argument. My stance my firm stance has always been if somebody creates a piece of work i pay them for it if somebody actually produces something that i enjoy i compensate them for it unless they're giving it out for free like league of legends poured many hours into there all my salt's gone as you can probably tell but for things like movies for software for games i pay for them i pay for them with the money that i have on hand and if i can't buy them i don't i mean i don't know all of the nuances of game development or even indie game development, but I know that at the very least I can stand firm with them in their industry by at least advocating that I'm not going to work with these sites who, even if they aren't doing it, create the culture where it, it it's acceptable for certain other sites to do it. So again, this isn't directed at any specific third party key reseller, but this has been known to go on. This is something that a lot of people have had issues with. There's been a huge Reddit thread where this has basically been proven with certain sites that are doing this and how they went on the one hand on the public front, they're saying, we don't condone this whatsoever. We actually are anti this. We anti condone this people. Then there's the proof that it's just like, Shh, don't tell anybody that we're doing this. Basically like politicians. Anyways, now again, I want to reiterate that this isn't me advocating for piracy or wagging my finger at anyone else who has chosen a partner by promoting super cheap Windows 10 keys. I honestly just want to open the conversation about the potential origin of those keys and the damages that they can have done not just to Microsoft, but to smaller game developers and fledgling studios trying to keep afloat on razor thin margins already. But I want to hear what you all think of this. Please, let's actually have a conversation. Did you know that sites like this did this kind of back deal stuff? Did, I mean, does this matter to you? Do you care? Is this something that is important? How do you feel about it? Let's chat about that because I'm interested in actually discussing this with all of you. And I like, I'm already anticipating the comments of like, they're big companies, they can afford for me to torrent. I'm ready for those comments, my friends. I, I, I can totally see them coming and sure, fine, big, People who make a lot of money don't deserve to make any more money. Okay, gotcha. All the while, we're still crying for NVIDIA to give us a new series of GPUs or even AMD, even though they make billions of dollars a year. We still are just like, I don't want you to give me the same architecture two years in a row. How dare you rebrand? Oh, th that kind of thing happens when there's not enough margin and not enough profit for them to actually make new iterations of what's coming out. If Windows, if Microsoft isn't making enough money on Windows, they're not going to continue to have the incentive to develop it. PlayStation doesn't sell enough games or the game studios aren't making enough money. They got shut down, the games industry gets smaller and we just get less important and exciting titles. Anyways, please let me know what your thoughts are, what your opinions are down in the comments down below or in the community discord. Let's chat about it down there. And don't forget, even in the despair and depravity that is all this, uh, depravity is such a condemning word. Anyways, in, in the face of all of this information, don't forget that this video is brought to you by UFD.deals. No shady stuff going on there. We don't buy keys. We just po point you to deals and have an affiliate code attached to it. That gives us a small kickback whenever you buy what's on that site. So UFD.deals, links in the description. Check it out if you're so interested. It would help us out a metric butt ton. Anyway, smash the like button if you enjoyed this video. Dislike the like button if you think I'm a hoity-toity little pious pompous butthead. Totally fine. Be sure to get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech related content. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers!